Preparations for Diwali festivities begin weeks in advance with dancers in rehearsal, float builders hard at work and stall holders stocking up. So it helps to keep everyone's energy up with some hearty meals. Yudhika has the perfect menu for this purpose with a nine gem curry taking the central role. Diwali or the Festival of Light is a vibrant and joyful celebration. It is a time where love and happiness is celebrated through the medium of food. Every home has their special Diwali menu and in some homes a vegetarian fast is observed. In others, a seafood feast is prepared. We have something for everyone on the menu today. We have a pea and paneer palau. To go with that, a peppery South Indian crab curry and a sweet something, a white chocolate hazelnut naan katai. Let's get cooking. The pea and paneer pilau makes a lovely change from the standard vegetable biryani at Diwali. The most important ingredient here is of course the paneer. I've made this using 6 litres of full cream milk. It's important not to use low fat milk or you'll get quite hard rubbery paneer which is not what you're looking for especially at Diwali. I've made this in advance, it's important to actually chill this so the paneer sets properly or it will be too crumbly. Start out by heating up the pan and in goes some sunflower oil. To this, some whole spices, bay leaf and cinnamon stick. Fry the whole spices until they're fragrant. In goes the onion. To this, some curry leaf and a teaspoon and a half of coarse salt. Work that through and we're going to cook these until they're light golden brown. That's when you get the best flavour from them. Time to add the garlic and use fresh crushed garlic for this not the store-bought version. And to this, a tablespoon of red chilli powder. Potatoes now. Pop those into the pan. Stir the potatoes through with the red chilli, onion and garlic. And to stop the burning, pour in the fresh cream. Stir well to coat. There's this lovely creamy sauce coating the potatoes and I could serve this as it is after simmering for a few minutes. Next ingredient, green peas. Just spread that over the potatoes and now the spice is going in. Ground cumin, a teaspoon. I didn't add the spices to the oil because I don't want them to burn. Garam masala, a teaspoon. Cumin, a teaspoon as well. And a pinch of turmeric. Water. I'd say about three quarters of a cup. I'm using a paella pan for this and this wok shape really does help. It keeps all the veggies in the liquid but protects the rice from getting mushy. Rice going in. I've par cooked this rice with a touch of oil and salt and it's about 95% cooked. Still a bit firm in the center. It's going to steam through and it's important to chill the rice properly before adding it to this dish. It sets the starch and prevents it from becoming mushy. To tint the rice grains, I'm using some egg yellow food colouring. It's a lot better than having solid yellow rice. I'll just show you quickly. You can see you get some orange grains, some pale yellow in colour, and that really makes the pilau come alive. A little butter going on top here as well. And for the paneer, you can fry the paneer and soak it in boiled water to keep it soft. I'm using the unfried version. I think it soaks up the flavours beautifully. We've got these lovely chunky fingers of paneer going on top of the rice. That's going to soak up the flavours and steam through. If you are serving the pilau out the pot, it might be a good idea to arrange the paneer slices so they're quite attractive. Brown onion going on top. I'm going to pop that into the centre. I don't cook with lots of whole spices and that's because I use a ground mix with cumin, coriander seeds, green cardamom pods and cloves. Generous sprinkling going on top and curry leaves again. Sprinkle that over and that looks perfect for a festive celebration already. I'm going to leave that to steam for about 10 minutes over a low heat. Cover the pan with a tight fitting lid and while that's steaming I'm going to start with the crab curry. Turning on the heat, it's amazing how a few simple ingredients come together to make up this delicious dish. The star of the show is obviously the crab and I'm using deep sea orange shell crab for this. The secret ingredient to this dish is the pickle masala. To start out the curry, sunflower oil going into the pan. Give that a swirl around. To this, about a teaspoon of carom seeds going in. 
Traditionally, fenugreek seeds are used, but I think they do add a bitterness and can ruin your crab curry. So I think it's one of the don'ts with the crab curry. Don't use the fenugreek seeds. I can hear the seeds start to sizzle, which means they are frying gently. Once that's done, onions going into the pan, some curry leaves as well. You can spice this up with a bit of green chili. I'm using just two and I snap them in half. It's all about the flavor of the green chili, not necessarily the chili burn. Give that a stir around. I'm turning down the heat. I've got a bit of prep to do while the onions fry. And for that, I've got some garlic here. I'm slicing some of these garlic cloves into the mortar. The secret here is to add a bit of salt to this and pound that down. The salt is the magic ingredient to this garlic paste. It almost dissolves the garlic and you get a lovely smooth paste coming through. It's been a few seconds and you can see it's already forming a paste. The salt does work wonders. That's ready. Let's have a look at the onion and I can turn that up again. I'm going to get the next ingredient, which is the garlic ready. Scraping that out of the mortar into the side of the pan. Mix that around. Red chili powder. Crab curry is often quite hot, so I think I'll use two tablespoons of red chili powder for this. Fried for about three to five seconds, not longer on the red chili powder. And next, in goes the crab. Stir that through. Fry the crab for a few seconds, not too long. You don't want the spice to burn in the pan. For this recipe, use garlic only and not ginger. The reason is ginger is a tenderizing agent and it will turn your crab and the meat in the crab quite mushy. When you see the oil separate from the onion and crab, add the tomato. Adding the tomato stops the spice from burning. Give that a quick mix around. And to spice up this crab, we've got two teaspoons of coriander going in, a teaspoon of garam masala, a teaspoon of cumin, and a generous pinch of turmeric. Mix that through and cook this down until the oil separates from the tomato. And when the tomato cooks down, it roasts in the pan, and that's when you get the best flavor from them. Ready for the next ingredient. It's that pickle masala. It's quite an intense flavor. To this, some tamarind, about a tablespoon. Black pepper, good sprinkling. I love using lots of black pepper in this crab curry. Another stir. Don't worry if it looks too dry. We're going to add some water now. Stir that through quite gently. That has a few awkward chunky bits in it. So they do tend to splash around. And that's our crab curry done. Let's get started on the naan katai biscuits. I don't like referring to naan katai as biscuits. It makes them sound ordinary and they are everything that's extraordinary. There's butter, cardamom, and this time I'm using hazelnuts instead of the traditional almonds and topping them with white chocolate as well to take it up a notch. The first ingredient going into the mixing bowl, 125 grams of soft butter. Always use butter at room temperature for this. And now, cream the butter until it's light in colour. Once the butter is light in colour, gradually add the sugar. Squeeze it up a bit. Once the butter and sugar come together, it's quite fluffy. Pour in the oil with the sunflower oil. This looks perfect, a lot like vanilla milkshake. That's the butter, sugar, and the sunflower oil that's come together. Sunflower oil gives these biscuits a real delicious crunch. To this, add some salt, bicarb, ground cardamom. You could also use cinnamon if you like, and semolina. On a gentle speed, mix those together. That's well combined. Get all the butter and sugar off the attachment. And now we've got two to two and a half cups of flour that you'll need for this recipe. A little at a time. Use a spatula and work those ingredients together. And the one ingredient you should be wary of using here is the bicarb. Too much and it could leave you with a soapy biscuit. More flour going in now. Leaving a touch in the bowl just in case we need it work those ingredients together. It becomes quite difficult to mix this with the spatula. The doughs come together nicely. And 
here's our greased baking tray. You'll need a scale for this, an electronic scale works best, and that's to portion the biscuit dough. I'm going to do 40 gram portions of dough, 40. It's a lovely soft dough, and roll that into a smooth ball, and once it's smooth, place the nut in the center and press down. You must do this as soon as the dough is smooth. If you try to do it later, you're going to crack the biscuits. You don't have to do an entire sweetmeat parcel for Diwali. You can just do a tray of these biscuits and they'll make a delicious treat. That's the last one. And these go into a preheated oven at 190 degrees Celsius for 10 to 12 minutes. While those are in the oven, let's check on the pea and paneer pilau. Let's have a look. That looks really good. The rice is steamed through. The potatoes have soaked up the flavor and turned yellow in color. And the paneer looks like large pieces of feta. This looks absolutely delicious. Let's have a look at the crab. There's a fair bit of sauce in here as well, which makes it perfect to enjoy with either rice or with rotis. Coriander going on top. And a little for the pea and paneer pilau as well. You know the biscuits are ready when you start to get the buttery cardamom aromas coming through. They should be done. Let's have a look. They are ready. Those look really good. They should come off the tray quite easily. Ah, there we go. I do have kitchen fingers. I'm going to loosen these off the tray while they're still quite warm. I've got some melted white compound chocolate here and white chocolate works really well with cardamom. And just drizzle a little over the biscuits. I always tend to pick the biscuit with the most chocolate on it. To finish up, I've got some gold leaf here. Diwali also celebrates prosperity, so I think a touch of gold leaf fits in beautifully with the theme. The chocolate hasn't quite set yet, but I'm going to pop them onto a serving plate. Those look gorgeous, and I think they're just in time for a well-deserved tea break. Don't be overwhelmed about creating your very special Diwali menu. Simple dishes come together to form part of an elaborate feast. I hope you give some of our recipes a try. I'm going to tuck into one of these Nankatai biscuits, but first I'd like to wish you a very happy Diwali.